or unusual to the cold and lack of power, most developers can't justify the work it would take to get their games on Nintendo platforms. This is still true for the case Switch, even if major titles like Skyrim and The Witcher 3 can make their way on the portable console. Switch Pro, though, should be just powerful enough to entice developers and make them out of the games with the right passage in most companies. Okay, that might sound like a legitimate Nintendo right now, but perhaps with some logic to back up that claim. Game companies aren't going to have developers start working on their tentpole franchises as soon as they're hired. Blizzard isn't going to hand the Overwatch keys over to just anybody. Gap has a vice grip on those. And then game companies have their talent prove themselves and get used to the kernel tools by working as a team on smaller projects. That's how Konami ended up into the style of Yoku, and thus where he needed to get the game I am Sensuma, to argue to that. Since the Switch Pro will be much closer to the specs of current and next-gen consoles, dev companies will start having new talent make games specifically for the Switch, or at the very least, port their most popular games over the system. More than 14 million people own a Nintendo Switch, and if even a fraction of them upgrade to a Pro, dev companies are definitely going to want a piece of that pie. So long as it's cost-effective to port games to the Switch Pro, dev companies will absolutely have their fledgling staff members tackle those projects. And if they're super cool, they might even let those new staffers create original IPs for the Switch Pro. The portability, touchscreen, and motion controls of the Switch family give developers a lot of room to be creative. They can implement mechanics that just work on other platforms and create really unique experiences. While developing games specifically for the Switch, multi-platform titles, and it'd still be great training. Developing a fundamental understanding of the game design is a big part of talent development at game studios. Having teams create smaller games for the Switch could help new hires learn about this process and how a particular studio goes about making games. Why haven't we heard more? Okay, at this point, the video you're probably asking is, what was the great development? I haven't we heard more about it. That's a fair question. After all, there are already dozens of leaks surrounding the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, and those will be talked about every year. Surely, if the Switch Pro was actually happening, we would have heard about game studios getting and leaking dev kits by now. Ordinarily, that would be true. However, Nintendo is once again playing by their own set of rules. Nintendo is literally more than all of its games are gaining out. However, some of the company's biggest games are actually made by third party developers. Game Freak makes the mainline Pokemon games. Retro Studios handle the Metroid Prime series, and Platinum Games is behind the Bayonetta franchise. Nintendo publishes way more games than what they develop themselves, but not everyone can have that kind of relationship with the company. Nintendo is super protective of their brand image and their IPs. Back, Nintendo bailed on E3 years ago specifically so that they could have even more control over the narrative surrounding their games. It would make sense that Nintendo would only share the Switch Pro dev kit with only their most trusted business partners. There are... Hello, I'm Shank. And I'm a Genki Gojo. It all started on October 20th, 2016, when Nintendo announced their new Nintendo Switch console. After seeing the console's controller modularity, alternative controllers like the GameCube were the first thing that came to mind. Nintendo is no stranger to fragmenting their controllers.